Hi, my name is Valerie Leonard. I work with nonprofit organizations to help them make stronger impacts to their communities. I want to take a few minutes to talk to you today about weathering the storm, specifically nonprofit survival tactics in the age of recovery. This is the first in a series. We'll cover four basic points today. We'll look at the guiding questions that should guide the work that we do, trends and in economic indicators for the state of Illinois, the state of the Illinois economy in 2015, and the implications for nonprofits. Our guiding questions should start off very generally, and then we should whittle it down to more specific questions that will impact our specific organizations and even us as leaders. We'll start off with the question of what is the state of the economy? It's important to understand what's going on at the federal level, what's going on at the state level, what's going on in our cities, and also what's going on in our local community e economy. Another question we need to ask ourselves is what's going on in the nonprofit sector? Is it experiencing healthy growth? Is it stalled? Is it stable? Uh, what are the trends in funding? What's going on in my particular sector? Say affordable housing, child care, arts and culture, etc. How are grant makers responding to the economy? Are they having a good year? Are they having a bad year? Um, what changes, you know, have they experienced a change in priorities? And what does that mean to us as an organization? What's going on in the community that we serve? Remember, every community has its own nuances. So it's really important to keep tabs on what's going on in our communities because that could really have an impact on the types of services we provide as well as the level of services that we provide. Are our services still relevant? and don't be afraid to get out of the businesses that are no longer relevant and to offer new businesses that are more relevant to the community. Is our organization equipped to respond to change? And if not, how do you make sure that you can respond? And then finally, and most importantly, how do we position ourselves to take advantage of change and emerge as a stronger organization? The next thing we want to look at is trends and key economic indicators for the state of Illinois. Uh, we want to look at things like the gross domestic product as well as the unemployment rates. Two of the most important indicators of the health of the state's economy are employment and gross domestic product or GDP. The state GDP is the total value of all the economic activity in the state, and that includes the production of goods and services, and that also includes the production from our nonprofit organizations. And in the state of Illinois, the um, nonprofit sector contributes about 8% of the state's GDP, so that's pretty significant. As you can see from this chart, the national GDP grew 3% in the last quarter of 2014, and the state GDP grew by about 1.5%. The chart on the left compares the unemployment rates of the state of Illinois and the United States. Unemployment rates for both the state of Illinois and the United States dropped 3.7 points between 2009 and 2014. So for example, in June of 2009, the state of Illinois had an unemployment rate of 10.1%. By November of 2014, the unemployment rate was 6.4%. And this is a pretty good indicator that we're on our way to recovery. And we're even better off now because as of February 2015, the unemployment rate for the state was 6.1% compared to 5.5%. So clearly, we're on our way to recovery. In answer to the question, what is the state of the economy, I think it's fair to say that though the state of Illinois is in recovery, the state of Illinois government continues to struggle. Illinois is getting to a point where they can't afford to pay their bills. Let's put this in perspective. The state of Illinois has a $70 billion budget, 
but as of December 2014, which is about halfway through the current year, they had a $6.4 billion backlog in bills, and much of that money was owed to nonprofit organizations. They also um, put it into the temporary tax increase in December, and as a result of that, we have a $1.6 billion budget shortfall for FY 2015, and we have a projected $6 billion budget shortfall for the following year. Governor Rauner has proposed two and a quarter percent cuts to every department across the board for the current year and has terminated contracts for non-essential services. And many of these contracts were terminated, you know, about six months into the deal. So this has had huge impacts to local communities. A number of organizations have had to lay off workers or even close their doors. And we've seen the biggest hits to education at $150 million, parks at $180 million, and then commitment to human services at $25 million. The Illinois Foundation giving has seen a steady increase in spite of the 2009 recession. As we can see from the chart on the left, they gave a record $2.8 billion in 2012. It should be noted that because the primary role of most private and community foundations is to provide funding, we have a tendency to overestimate their ability to serve all social service needs in the state. In fact, most private giving each year comes from individuals, approximately 85%. There's also a misconception that foundations provide the majority of funding for nonprofits. However, as we can see from the chart on the right, in 2012, the state of Illinois provided $28.9 billion to the nonprofit sector, while private foundations provided $2.8 billion. Putting this in perspective, the state provided about 10 times the amount that the private foundations had. So clearly, there's a great dependency on the state for the nonprofit sector. Individuals provided $15.8 billion and the federal government provided $14.8 billion to Illinois nonprofits. So what does all this mean for nonprofits in the state of Illinois? First of all, in spite of the fact that the Illinois economy is in recovery, the state is not doing so well. They have a $1.6 billion budget gap that they're trying to close this year, and most of this is due to the rollback of the temporary tax increase in January 2015. And as we know, nonprofits are very heavily dependent upon the state. A reduction in tax receipts makes it very difficult for the state and local governments to meet their obligations and to address the growing need for social services. The inability of the state to pay nonprofits on time is one of the greatest threats to the viability of the nonprofit sector. Now, this came from the Donors Forum in 2003. Fast forward to 2015, another present threat is the fact that a number of organizations have seen their contracts just cut off before the end of the fiscal year. And it's also important to look at the fact that the nonprofit sector accounted for 8% of the state's workforce and 8.7% of the state's economy back in 2000. And it hasn't changed very much to the present. Nonprofits must diversify their funding streams to include more individual donors, foundation, and income from fees and sales. So in effect, you know, nonprofits have to become more entrepreneurial. Does that mean they have to run like quote unquote for profit businesses? No, but they have to be more opportunistic, taking advantage of every opportunity that they can in the marketplace. This concludes part one of Weathering the Storm. I want to thank you for joining us, and I hope this information has been useful. If you have any questions or want to share some stories about how you are weathering the storm, feel free to contact me at consulting at ValerieFLeonard.com. You can also visit my website at ValerieFLeonard.com to learn more about my services and to sign up for my blog. In the meantime, stay tuned for part two, where we'll go into detail about what's going on in the nonprofit sector, how your peers are responding, and how grant makers are responding. Thank you very much. So I look forward to talking to you. Take care.